take a look for different techniques using the Lisa Horton interference inks. Coming up next on Catherine Paper Art. So I'm experimenting with the Lisa Horton Cloud9, um, the interference ink, and I'm just presently going to um, emboss on some black cardstock. So if you if you know about the interference inks, you'll you'll know that they look like one color on white cardstock and a totally different color on black cardstock. So it looks like it's purple, and it would be if I embossed it on to white cardstock, but it will be the green color on the black. And I'm planning to do multiple colors and see how this comes out. It might turn out to be a dud, or it might be something really nice, I don't know. In any rate, I'm gonna give it a shot and see what it looks like. So I'll finish inking this up and be right back. Okay, not the best, not the best, but I only have limited colors, so, uh, <laughs> and this was an elaborate embossing folder to try this out on. So maybe I should stick with something a little simpler instead of two birds on branches. But you can see that some of the colors are very pretty. Plus I, I had a lot of inking to do on this and I didn't know how long it would hold before it started to dry. The first color that I inked were the leaves though and they held up, you know, they held up well. The last thing that I inked were the branches and the beaks and those didn't really come out too well. So I'll try some, I'm going to try a simpler uh, embossing folder. I'll be right back. So this time I'm going to use Simon Says Stamp and um, Floral Field. And I'm going to do one in black and white. And this is basically daisies or chrysanthemums. Um, and one thing you want to keep straight is which side you want to paint or ink up because you you know you want the the side that's going to be raised usually you want the the side that's embossed outward that's the one you want to ink up so first i'm going to do the the white cardstock. And so I'll finish inking this up and be right back. I much prefer inking these with these sponge, um, the, the sponge, what do you call them? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, another disappointment. Maybe I should stop spritzing the cardstock because it seems to, I didn't spritz the folder, just the cardstock, but it seems to wash away the ink. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll try it one more time. Well, I did not wet my cardstock and I got the same <laughs> results, nearly the same results as my first try where the petals are coming out white. I don't I don't know why. I mean, I'm pushing the ink in there, so that's that's not an issue. The the embossing folder is definitely getting inky coverage. So, I don't know. 
This is not so successful. It was a success when Lisa Horton did it in her video. So I don't know, I'll be right back. Because there was so much ink left over, I ran a black cardstock through it and you can see it, it did the same thing. All the ink gets pushed behind for the most part. And um, you're left with black petals in this instance and you can still see that there's a lot of ink left in here and I, I don't know why. Well, that's it for my attempts at embossing with this ink. Um, so now I am going to just do some straightforward stenciling and I'll be right back. So I'm going to start off using the tin tile stencil from Simon Says Stamp. And now I will be stenciling over this with a different stencil. And I've got Nina cardstock underneath it. And I'm going to start out with the opal blush shimmer. And you can see where I tested the colors on black cardstock. I tested some of them on plain white, on some glossy white, and um, just a colored cardstock as well. I like using these sponge daubers because they just make it <clears throat> spreading it so much easier. It does get a little uh, heavy if you park the sponge too long, but that's okay because I'm not going for perfection here. I am just going for coverage. And it won't matter so much anyway because I'm going to be stenciling over the top of it. Now the thing I've noticed about these inks is that they really don't blend. They're not, well, the reason I used um, I tried different treatments, like on this piece of cardstock, I tried seeing if they were reactive with anything. <clears throat> Excuse me, and they, they really aren't. I tried using alcohol to see if they were reactive. I tried water. Um, nothing. <laughs> they really aren't reactive. They uh, really don't blend. Just to show you, I'll pick, pull out some peacock tails also. And I'm using the same brush. And you can see they don't, they don't really mix at all. And um, so, the qualities of this ink are that it's shimmery. So it has the mica built into it. Um, it doesn't smear. Once it dries, it's dried. You, you do, the mica doesn't lift off of it or out of it. And um, I mean, it's pretty. And the other uh, quality to it is that it takes on a different color on a different color cardstock, such as a black or dark colors. Looks totally different. So it, it's fun in that pers perspective. Okay, so, and it rinses away beautifully. It hasn't stained anything. Um, hasn't stained my embossing folders. This is the first time I've stenciled with it, so we'll see how it washes off. But I'm fairly certain it's just gonna wash off beautifully. All right, so I'll rinse this and be right back. 
Okay, I'm going to use the Simon Says Stamp Daisy Bouquet Stencil next. And, whoops, I close this up. I am going to use Well, daisies, I guess I'll go with lemon candy. It's a little hard to read. Oops, oopsie, oopsie. centers first. Well, anyway, I will uh, finish inking this up off screen. One thing is they, the ink really saturates brushes. Probably does the same thing on the sponge applicators, but um, the, the green especially, this, this brush is just loaded. Um, could just be color specific, I don't know. But anyway, I'll finish this off screen and be right back. I changed my mind, I don't wanna use yellow for the daisies, I'm gonna use Golden Sun, which comes out a reddish color ordinarily, like this. We'll see what it looks like on the blue, because I see that the green centers have gone purple, which is what it would be on a black cardstock or a colored cardstock. So this might actually go orange. Hmm. So here was another attempt and it, it is a dud also. But you can see that the, the colors do overlay pretty well. Um, they don't blend, like I said, and they don't, happily, they don't stain stencils or embossing folders. So there's that. Okay, so these are my attempts at working with the uh, interference combination dye pigment ink. This is just something on the background that I threw together, so there's no... Uh, no mystery to that. It was just smushing it onto the background. This was my first attempt on black cardstock. And um, it was the embossing folder was so detailed and I really don't have enough colors in my mix because I, I don't have, um, I don't have all the colors. So that had limited success. Although I think could have been very good if I had more colors. Then my second attempt was this, and I had sprayed the cardstock and thought that by spraying it, it washed all the colors to the back. So I tried it again without spraying, and I got the same result. So I wasn't happy with that, but I had so much ink left over, so I ran it on black, and I pretty much got the same result. All the color went behind the flowers, the, the daisies, whatever they are, for the most part. But it looks better than than on the white. And this was my last attempt um, doing um, stenciling over stenciling using just the uh, interference inks and uh, wasn't real happy with that either. So. As a background, it's it's okay for the seagulls. And I just used uh, two blues. I did this off screen, so nobody really got any. It just it was just smushing inks on here. That's all it was, so. So I decided that it would be better for me to come back in and finish off some details with a detail brush. And so I did that with the birds, and I'm now doing that with the cherries. And I discovered that you can erase this even 24 hours after you've applied it.
So that's good to know that you can erase this ink because if you've overshot your, if you've made a mistake and you, you know, you, you put the ink in the wrong place, like I did here, you can remove it. So that's good to know. And being able to come back and, and add more detail where I really want it is a benefit also. So I'll come and finish off their, their breasts and, and touch up their heads and clean this up a bit better. And I'll go ahead and mount it. So I'll do that off camera and be right back. Okay, here are two cards that I made with the interference ink from Lisa Horton. And I think they came out pretty nice actually. And so as I said, you can erase the ink even after 24 hours and you can somewhat layer it on top of another color. So that's, uh, that's good to know. So I hope you liked the video, and if you did, please leave us a thumbs up. Thank you for watching.